Good evening, everyone. We're just about to get the show started, but let's start off by thanking our title sponsor for the Fear Vision webcast, Simple Fishing. Man, if you're looking to get the best subscription box in Canada, make sure you check out simplefishing.ca. CA. Check out the RLM Elite box. They got pike boxes, bass boxes, walleye boxes, and a multi-species box. You are getting more bang for your buck than you'll ever know. You can save $10 on your first box by using the discount code FEARFISHING at checkout. Check it out. We're going to open a box tonight. Let's get this started. Booyah. Another amazing start here. <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. <laughs> We're having some technical. We're having some technical difficulties with the camera going on here. <laughs> Number fifty-seven, and still yeah. don't have an opening. We should just sing a jingle, bud. Oh yeah, my really gosh! Should. Little little song and a dance yeah. going on. Yeah, little song and a dance. Let's go to the start. I don't know why this bugger's not working. Hold on a second here. Welcome to the Fear Vision webcast, everyone. If anybody out there can see us, nobody can see us. No one can see us. No one can see us. No one. It's working on my phone. Is it? Yeah. Working on mine. Pay your bill can you guys out there see us? I hope you can see us. Fear Fishing webcast number 57. Oh, it's working. Look. Just add a moment. It's working. Can we split screen so we can see all the beautiful people? In the oh, my oh, gosh. We got it. Go. We got it working. Fear Fishing webcast number 57, not number 56, like in the photo I made today. <laughs> the uh, opening of the Fear Fishing webcast that never works. It's still trying to play there in we're the background. We're in Do you syndication, see that, buddy. I see it. Yeah. Oh. We're in syndication, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it never works. This computer is. Uh, this is the first Apple computer I ever bought, and it never, ever works. Thank you, Apple. Ever. Everything else Apple I've ever owned is pretty good, except for this computer that refuses to play the opening screen or any videos while we're <laughs> doing this webcast. Ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Mark, it's good to have you back. We haven't uh, seen you in a while. You. No, no, man. I've been uh, tripping On the south. Road. Yeah. Tripping south. Yeah, man. We'll get to that in did a second. Did you miss me? We Big did. time. We did. Yeah, you did. How long were you yeah, gone? you did. Face. I know you did. How long were you gone for? Uh, 10 days. Seemed a lot longer than that. Oh, thanks, man. It really did. It makes me real warm and fuzzy. Sean McCall's in the house. Yo. Sean McCall's in the house. How's it going, buddy? All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's Monday. it. Yeah, wow. that's it. It's, it's it. all I got. Monday. Wow. It's, been, it's all right. It's been Somebody get this guy a hat. It it's just all right. Somebody it's been, get this there's guy been a hat. lot uh, of busy time since Bass Opener. Amber's behind the Mac that doesn't work tonight. Surprised that camera works. <laughs> so am I. Surprised yeah. any of the cameras work tonight. <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah, we did this last webcast, time. All you know, and I even like tested everything beforehand, and it just refuses to work when we go live. That's I don't like know my why. pre-fishing, isn't it? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> work during pre-fish. <laughs> Bass opened in Ontario, but first let's talk about Mark. And you know what? Pre-fishing is a nightmare. Pre-fishing, and like I've never had a good tournament where I had a really good pre-fish. We'll get into our pre-fish because we thought we were going to slam them. Same. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. On like cast nine of the day. Yeah. Things are looking good. Yeah. Not so hot after the next day. No. Yeah. Mark, you had the biggest adventure. I did. Let's start with you. I did. I went down to the Eastern Divisionals down in Winyao Bay out of Georgetown, South Carolina. And had an absolute bass. A bass. Had a bass. No, I didn't have a bass. <laughs> <laughs> I had a blast. Not after day Not one. Not too much on the bass. <laughs> no, you know what? I had a great pre-fish, just like you were just saying. You know, I was really confident. Um, you sent some pictures to us of yeah, some, yeah. some great fish. I, yeah. 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 And, uh, we were excited for you. And then, then the day came, and nothing was there. But it's the tidal water. Curse. Right? In the, yeah, it's yes. tidal water, the which is tidal water. Up. So what I found on day one at 8.15 in the morning... Yes. Come tournament day, that was one fifteen in the afternoon that those same conditions were there. Did you go there at one fifteen? Uh, I did go there. What time did you have to be off the water? Uh, two fifteen, I believe. So your window day. is yeah, tight. yeah, right. and I had a twenty five minute run back. Balls. Wow, yeah, and, and like, and this is not a bo small body of water. This is huge. This is like creeks and canals and canals off of canals and cuts and. And all kinds of stuff. Like Old rice fields. They used to do make rice there, I guess. Grow rice there. So there's all these paths and fields and places you if can go. If you were go. just guessing to, uh, would it be bigger in Simcoe? Would um, you like added all the creeks and stuff? Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, probably. Really? 
Yeah, there's a lot of water there. There's, I think there's, Lake Fort. Do you get like a wide lake part of water there, or is it all no. like rivers? And well, channels? there's Main River, like the Winnow, the PD. Well, the PD gets small too, and the so Santee. How wide across? Is this uh, river? at places, it's probably half a kilometer. kilometer oh, really? Across. So bigger than the Otonabee? Yeah, it's pretty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Almost like crazy, the width yeah. of r- not quite rice. Nah, I don't even know what. Kind of like sturgeon. Maybe or Shimong. The Shimong. width of Shimong. Okay. Yeah. 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 That makes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the river. You can def- that's the main river, and then there's all these feeder creeks and channels and rice paddy things that it's all dredged, right? So, how did you pick your spot in pre-fishing? I don't um, mean, like when you have like miles and miles and miles of, and you know, hundreds of miles. How do you? How did you get? Well, started? Well, I went in with a plan because I went there. I researched a lot for this thing, right? Yeah. And everything I read said it sucked, but I thought <laughs> I wasn't going to let that get in my way. So by, pl- by seeing all the weights, I think I, uh, I say yeah. it sucks. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the place I wanted to go was the Santee River, which okay. was one hell of a run. Let me okay. tell you. So I wanted to how see if miles? I could get there. Um, where I wanted to go it was probably forty miles one way. Well, that's wow. a tour, man. That's a yeah. That's a so, haul. anyways, the first day I burnt all my gas getting up as far as I could. I got lost in these little stupid little creeks. They look good on the map. Then you get in there. They're just wider than your boat. They're curved. Wow. They're full of stumps and alligators now, and yeah, snakes. Yeah, not really a place you want to get lost in. Right? Well, I was no. kind of scared, to be honest. <laughs> with you. I was telling Sean on the way here, I like I was scared going in these creeks. I don't know where the hell I am, right? This is all new water. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. things in that water that want to kill you. And I thought, you know, myself, you know, I said, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm in the boat. I'm moving. There's alligators. Yeah, there's snakes. Yeah, but I go walking through the woods looking for bears. I can yeah, handle yeah, this. Yeah. I can <laughs> handle this. So I finally got out of there. Uh, I ran out of gas on my one tank. I said, okay, so I'll drift a little bit back. I drift a little bit back. Then I went a different way home. Had enough. Uh, so I didn't get to where I wanted to go on the sand. The, the fishing down in the States isn't a whole lot like, like, I've never gone up a creek in any of our lakes where it was really good. Like, it's always the main river channel. And I don't know why. But I remember when we went beast. to Lake when we went to Lake Fork, I went like yeah. off the main lake into a back bay and then up this tiny little creek and uh I had to go like around a tree and my boat just fit between this tree and I ended up in some guy's backyard and I wasn't really sure I'm like in in Texas that does this guy own this water? <laughs> yeah. Right? Can I get so shot? I thought I'm gonna jack your the fish that are here real quick and I'm gonna get the hell out of here. But it's like it's like nuts, I'm telling dude. you, even from the like where we stayed on Lake Fork to like it was bigger than any like we went to uh, like fish around here. I don't think like we really condense our lakes here for tournament fishing. Like uh, on the like in the Elite Series when they're talking about different pools, they're talking about locking, right? Like we're yeah, yeah. we're stuck to one pool. Yeah, yeah. The, this you could go hundreds of miles if you wanted to, and you had the ability to. You go hundred miles like realistic. into these creeks and stuff, dude. It's crazy. If you were the talk- amount of water is ridiculous. The shoreline, the amount of shoreline, I wouldn't even be able to fathom how many. Think about like if they ran uh, a tournament on, let's say Cameron Lake, and you could lock. Realistically, you could fish Cameron Lake, Balsam, Balsam, Balsam Sturgeon, Sturgeon, Sturgeon Tri Lakes. <laughs> yeah, like you can yeah. go all the way you, to Georgia. You know what I mean? You go to yeah. Rice and Lake you if you wanted way, to. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So like. Yeah. We're breaking our tournament fishing up here into one pool at a time, whereas yeah. in you, like it's not comparable to... No, not this part. I'm sure there's tournaments there where you can only go certain... But they're allowed to lock, right? They're the allowed, to, are lock. allowed to lock. I believe we're the only reason why we're not allowed to lock is because you can't bring the fish from that's one correct. side to that's the correct. other. That's correct, yeah. That, that's you can't transport. Fashion. Yeah. yeah, lake to lake. So anyways, uh, tournament came, you know, or the, the next day I went, I launched, like, instead of taking my boat all the way... Like you, from you, Georgetown all the yep. time, I trailered up, up the Winnow, uh, up, okay. up the uh, Mackinac. I was fishing, and I decided, you know what? Instead of learning a little bit of this creek, a little bit of this creek, a little bit of this creek, I'm going to spend all my time on the Wackamaw, and I'm going to find spots on the Wackamaw. Wackamaw, that's Wackamaw. Good Wackamaw. Wackamaw. isn't that Wackamaw. a great name? I'd Wackamaw off <laughs> is what they did. <laughs> so, anyways, it came tournament day. I zeroed on day one. Yeah, I had, I had, I had the fish on. Um, but, uh, you know, my non-boater got his limit. You know, I heard guys talking about saying, oh, uh, oh, my boater, he blocked me all day. We went up this little creek that was just big enough for the boat and he just flipped and flipped and flipped in front of the boat and I had nothing. You know what I mean? Really? I, but I never did that. Not once did my non-boater have, well, that was good of have you. a, yeah, I think maybe, maybe I did it wrong. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Obviously, I don't yeah. know. I want him to have a good day too. So both days, well, my, my, uh, my non got their limits. Um, 
Now, non- when you're fishing with nons, you're not fishing with Ontario nons. No, it's no. All the nons down there are, 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 are drawn into Yeah, a I had a guy, for, a young kid uh, from um, South Carolina the first day. Uh, North Carolina, sorry, the first day. Aaron, he was a really good kid. But 20 years old, he's on the college team there and everything. Nice. So that's really cool. And then the second day, I had a guy from Virginia, but he fished out of North Carolina or something. I guess they're really close or something. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He's saying. And uh, older guy, he was, he was a good guy. So they both got their limits, and right they on. got some really nice fish, too. That's awesome. Yeah, so. We, if you could do it again, let's say if you had uh, the old uh, hindsight, what would you do differently? If you were going, th- if you knew what you knew now, and you were going tomorrow, and you were going to start this whole adventure again, what would you do different? Um, I would hit. I would eliminate some of the water that I went to first on those days. Um, I would concentrate more on catching high tide fish because that is seems to be impossible. Yep. And um, so I when the when the tide comes in, you were saying it it basically the fish just gets so jammed back in the. I can, think so. Yeah, I think so. But from what I found, I never caught a fish on high tide really? in five days. So you think it just shuts them down, or you think it moves them all completely? I think they move maybe in really, 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 really tight. Really, and uh, you can, they yeah. can get in further now than you can cast it. Yeah, yeah. I was going to go to Walmart and buy one of those rocket rods and shoot <laughs> it in there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, so we need I, one of those for some of the stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you know what? But the experience was just incredible. You know, it really was uh, to have the team down there, and you know, we we swam in the evenings. It's cool down. That's cool. Like it was ridiculous. So it was it was a good experience. It was an amazing experience, and I'll go down again in a heartbeat. In the uh, we had Mark Havana and Danny McGarry. Yes, they yeah. made the team. And they, really they're going to nationals, I yeah. believe. Yeah, they're going to nationals. Uh, it's not uh, put out where they're going yet, but it's usually the same lake as the classic. So I'm thinking now, they're probably is that going all to this Knoxville. year? It is in September-ish, I believe. Yeah, October. because if yeah. they win, they go to like they go to the Bassmaster right? Classic in March. Yeah, in, you know, in Knoxville. They're yeah, they're one step away. They're one win away from going to the Bassmaster Classic. But now you're talking about one guy, yes. winning that yes. one event. No, 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 no it's no, one no. from each division, one from right? Each division. So I was in the Easterns, right? But there's also a Southern and a Western. You know, okay. like uh, guys. In so the how is how so? How so, tip, so really, typically four guys are going to go to the Bassmaster Classic. I believe it's that deal. three or four guys go to the Bassmaster and Classic. It's the, it's out of the top, term. is it the top four from that tournament or the top guy in each division? The g- top guy in each division, I believe. Oh, yes, I, I believe that's how yeah. Charles made it. One, Charles, yeah. like, yeah. won the he Eastern. He actually won the yeah. National, the Easterns and the yeah. National. Yeah. So you got to fish against the top boaters from all the guys that were at that last one. Right so on. the guys from South Carolina, the yeah, top yeah. guy from South Carolina, Delaware just kicked it. They won the, I believe the, their guy won, and they also won the boat, too. There's a team... Uh, you you weigh all your your team is a cumulative weight for the for so the who gets the boat? Too. Yeah, well it's 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 used team as a boat? fundraiser for the for oh, your gotcha. state. That's good. Oh, your that's state. all right. Yeah. So you get that's to raffle plan. it off or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that's the idea of it. That's pretty amazing that everybody gets together and and like that. You we all you had said meals it. together. And it was a good experience. Yeah, not it's just like yeah. The how fish much fried look? chicken did you eat? I ate quite a bit of fried chicken. Did you get catfish? <laughs> I had some catfish at a buffet. What, what about yeah, what? I smashed some crab. Yeah, I had crawdads. White gravy. <laughs> Uh, I had some white gravy too. I like yeah. white gravy a lot. I love it. I love it. It's yeah. So I smashed some seafood. It was really good. We had a team dinner the night. You listen to this. So we we the last night we decided to go to. The Hog Haven, it was called. It was just like a little hole-in-the-wall buffet. They had really, really good seafood, I found out, because I ate it. Yes. But anyways, when we get there, the place is packed. It's really? just like It looks almost like a trailer, like a rundown trailer. Oh, they're the best. That's like you know? Seth. They're, so yeah. we get in Texas. there, and there's really a big bus in the front. We're going, oh, my God, the parking lot's packed. We get in yeah. there. The freaking governor's in there doing a press conference no way. speech. There's cops everywhere. The black sedans are outside at the buffet. No really? way. <laughs> that's, cool. that's 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 going really for awesome. voters. Yeah. And you know what? Not one of them ate. No way. They just did their little speechy thing. There was people dressed up and cameras and all that crap. And we're sitting there going, oh. Okay. That's one of the my restaurant th- owners lobbying them. <laughs> yeah. For so sure. that's one of I'm my favorite sure. things about the states is the I'm whole not sure the wall he, joint. If he was the governor or he was a governor, like. He wanted. He was campaigning oh, to become. I think governor. there is an election coming up. Actually, yeah. yeah so it was crazy. It. it was crazy. I didn't, I didn't expect to see that. Those what uh, what else was crazy more. down there? Didn't the guy find a body? Yeah, man. No so way. one of our guys on day two of the tournament. A guy from Team Ontario, right? Yeah, a guy from Team uh, Richard. No Richard way. is his yeah. name. He was uh, flying up the Black River, and he came into uh, yeah what he thought 
something that looked really, really strange that shouldn't have been there. Yeah. So Rip by it, right? Yeah, yeah. He ripped by it. Oh, turned man. Turned around. And oh. uh, sure as shit, it's oh, a no. floater. It's a, it's a dead guy oh, floating wow. down the river. So he called, uh, called the cops. And he had to float with his body because that, that body of water is moving all the time, oh. right? So in order for them to, you know, keep in where this guy is. I would have fished it before I called it in. <laughs> <laughs> Cover? Wait, what do you got to do? Yeah. yeah. So anyways, I yeah. Would've. So That's he two hours. Fish 18 pounds off a dead body. Or, yeah. You know. Do you remember the time that we almost found the floater? When we we could have when we, we went hunting have? that day. Yeah, we almost found a well, floater? The yeah. two, we, so we get it. We always went to the end of the, the road on Race Lake to see if the geese were on the, before we went in our tree stand. So early, early in the pitch black, we would go down yeah. right when we were having our coffee and, and watch the to geese, see to what see kind if of the geese, geese were there. there, how many of them were there, because we were trying to get them to land in the field right by there. So it was kind of like our ritual. We were like, going to ask them. Oh, this is when you were bow hunting geese. He, yeah. He, no, so, we were bow hunting <laughs> deer, so but we, we so thought <laughs> maybe we... It's dark, <laughs> pitch black. Maybe we could bow hunt a geese. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> we, pull, we go up and we park, right? We go okay. up and, we, and it's windy. It told? was really, really windy. I remember it that. It was, yeah. So on this windy. day, we were late. So we didn't go to like, uh, there's like a boat ramp there, right? We would pull like the front tires on the boat ramp and you could see the, like there'd be a couple hundred geese there sometimes yep. and there sometimes there wouldn't. So we were late this day, so we went right to our tree stands, right? We drove in, we parked, yeah. we, you know, and I'm sitting in my tree stand, and uh, helicopters start flying like yeah. crazy, like Just two circling, of them. circling, like right there. And we're right sitting there. in our tree stands, talking to each other in our text messages, and they, they found the gentleman's body right there at the boat launch. If we hadn't have been late, we'd have found it. Yeah. Oh, it's right. a good thing you relate. Yeah. I know, eh? Not so, something anybody really wants to find, I don't think. No. no. Ne- never pleasant. No, for sure. And it's not like we saw any box that no. day. <laughs> not with the helicopter. Or that year. 60 feet off the... <laughs> <laughs> you saw a buck that year, didn't you? Uh, I did not I see think a buck. I, I think, think that was, was your shot at the end. Yeah. Yeah. At Sean? the end. That was your friend, wasn't it, Sean? That yeah. One, yeah. yeah, yeah, he was Mark, delicious. That was that year. Mark I saw one deer on that whole property walking to my tree stand one time. Yeah, well. That was tough. That's a grind. We don't even want to talk about hunting. Yeah, we suck it's just at disappointing. it. disappointing. Hey, man, five years I sat in the stand before I shot a deer. It's really... really you got to yeah. be patient. Yeah, and you got to hey, be didn't selective. Miles just win some big, huge thing? <clears throat> yeah, no. my brother on... Uh, well, he shot a monster yep. over the over the, over the the season. He there. got to he shoot something a, really cool. He shot a 170, right, which is a monster, monster buck. And uh, he um, got entered because if you have a subscription to Ontario Monster Whitetails magazine, okay, you automat- you send in the picture of your buck. Of your buck, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. And then you're, you're entered for that week. So okay. Miles ended up winning that week with the, biggest, with the biggest buck. That's really cool. Right. Because you got you to get it measured, but you got to wait two months for it, allow it, allow it some drying time. Oh, gotcha. It, right? yep. yeah, yeah. So at Big Buck Day there, he got it all measured up and, uh, you know, he won his week. So... The uh, Be- the Beasley Brothers they uh, have this uh, contest for the Ontario Monster Whitetails called uh, King of the Woods. Nice. So he went in the King of the Woods contest on Friday, and uh, I went up there with him. It was the day before his 40th birthday. We'll get to Happy that birthday. a little bit yeah. too. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, he ended up winning uh, like two thousand dollars worth of stuff, bro. Brand new Hoyt hey, bow. compound bow. I saw the pictures Blinking. online. They did yeah. like uh, uh, awesome. rifle shooting, yep. uh, compound bow, sh- no, uh, crossbow shooting, and then they had to do a written test. Yep, yep. So you oh, walk yeah. through an archery course with a crossbow, you know, and uh, everybody takes their shot. And then, you know, if, if you do 3D, 3D target shooting, you'll understand it. On the animal, there's a small ring, and, and inside that is 12. Outside of that ring is the 10 ring. Anywhere in there scores 10. Then there's 8. And then anywhere on the body scores 5. So it's kind of like yep. a game of golf. you got to guess your yardage. And, That's really cool. And fire for that for that 12. But right? you want a higher score. Yeah, yeah. You want you want to so shoot. So it's not 12. like golf, is it? Twelves and tens are usually pretty good. <laughs> well, Twelves and tens are pretty you, good. If you, 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 if you, go, if you like got a, a outside cup, course. there's a hole in the grass this big. If you put it over here, it don't fuck count. It's, it's kind of like golf, but <laughs> it's not count. like golf. <laughs> I don't know how you play it's, golf. It's kind of it's kind of like you, golf. You walk through. Other and than you the whole situation, it's a lot like you walk around and you have different. Yeah, you're in the woods having a walk. That's the only thing. that's Really not like golf at all. That is funny. It's kind of like golf. Okay. go Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> wow. So anyway, yeah, and they do. Uh, they did a rifle shooting. I think they use the uh, two, two, three, and uh, then there's skill testing questions, right? Yeah. So it was. Uh, what was on the test? Was, did he tell you what was the kind of questions are on there? Uh, it's it's all hunting related questions. Gotcha. It, it's all about the regs and uh, okay. you know, like like different questions too. Like uh, you got to have a dog license, or yeah, 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 or you got to wear your orange, yeah. or you know, it's it's stuff like that. Huh. So you got to answer it right. 
So and uh, it You'd was. You hate it to was, do bad on that, at, like that event, hey. Eh? The 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 top guys, the top two guys. Yeah. There was, I think it was point. It was the closest they ever had. I think it was point three of a percent between the top two guys. No one way. And two. Yeah. Well, that's wicked. Yeah. But you everybody get, there walked away with like well prizes. over two thousand bucks worth of stuff. That's awesome. Wow. Every single guy. That's really that's good. Awesome. Yeah. Do, do we have anything like that in fishing? Like uh, a, no. no, not really. Negative. No, no. You can fish all summer. And we win, don't have as many win clubbies and not. How get many $2, fishing, like legit fishing magazines, are in Ontario? Like it, that's an Ontario magazine, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be like ten or fifteen yeah, bucks. They're local. They're, they're right out of I think it's uh, Keene. They're just yeah. south. Of we don't really like who. Do we have a bass magazine? Uh, we used to. We for a while we oh, did. We got yeah, we did. Ontario outdoors, right? Yeah, well, that's yeah, that'd that's be the one. Every, that's outdoors. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah not everything. Fishing. But we don't really have like a bass. Well, we don't. Like our, our our fishing season is pretty short. You know. Yeah. Well, our our soft water is pretty short, and then it'd you know, be the same as like you, the deer season, though. Yeah. So it, it's I think it's easier for us for where we live just to have a magazine that contains yeah. everything. everything right? well, when you think about it, there's we got more fishing season than deer season. We do. That's pretty. Maybe I just let the cat out of the bag. Somebody out there should start a magazine where you just. What was that one? Bass fishing. something. Bass Nation? No, not no, Bass Nation. But no, we, bass I remember that. Something. Bass. Yeah, we had like a, a couple of years of that. Yeah, yeah. Do you it remember, I remember free that too? Yeah, or thirty. Well, oh, there's Big Jim's magazine. Yeah, I just fish. Just fish. Just fish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. Yep. That's yeah. the first. Of my dad, when I was a kid, he used to tell me we had a subscription to it, and then I found out when I was a teenager, it was, <laughs> it free, was game. free at the tackles. <laughs> it was free at the Canadian <laughs> Tire. He'd be like, "Hey, your subscription came in." <laughs> <laughs> Some guy at work would bring it to him. Use, yeah. <laughs> and I get them. So uh, yeah, so you had a good time though on your trip. I had an amazing time. Amazing time. You know, there's nothing like fi- flipping for bass, and there's dolphins busting. That's behind crazy. You and huge sturgeon break in the water. And Craziness. I see. How big is sturgeon? Hundred pounders? Oh, they, yeah, they were six, seven feet. I would wow. say they were big. And I they saw were, those. Uh, oh, that's nothing, man. When we were in Florida, we got twelve footers all day. Really? Oh, hundreds Stur- of like them. white sturgeon. 100. You don't swim in Lake Okeechobee, man. Really? You, do you don't the, swim in you do win not. Bay either, but <laughs> you people do. do. Oh, yeah, I was looking at alligators, and there's like yeah, nobody diving board off this dock. Did you guys see today? They had uh, a zone alive, and uh, no, we worked. I didn't see it either, but yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to bring you into <laughs> something, and I'm going to pass this around. Um, Mark Zona cut Seth Fighter's hair. What? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like you. facial hair? No. Or let's talk about this. Seth Fighter, oh Iowa my America. God. Pro. I guess oh, they he did cut it. his hair. Oh he yeah, shaved his hair. He took him to Mullet Town live. Who would do that? Somebody. Listen, I'm gonna read this. Uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Seth Fighter fishing. If you miss Zona live today, you effed up. Thanks for the fr- <laughs> for the freshie at Mark Zona. <laughs> wow. There's some wow. beautiful locks, too. I can't believe you let him shave oh, it. Oh, man. The flow. That guy was rocking it. Yeah, but it's only, shaved, it's only shaved to, like, the back of his ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Oh, the my man, God. The man, the legend. God. We all got to meet Seth, too. He's yeah, a, he's, he's a, a really good He's guy. a great dude. Let me... You guys talk here for a second. I'm going to look up Zona. I, Zona. I think Zona had the better picture of it. Oh, my goodness. He, so did, he's gonna it, have to, he did it when I saw it on Facebook. He's going to have to shave it to the wood now. No, he doesn't even have nah, it. Nah, Seth Fighter, you do whatever you want with your you Seth Fighter. You can do whatever yeah, you want. That's true. That's Is true. Is that the Kentucky Waterfall? Oh, there they are. Is that what that's called? The Kentucky oh. Waterfall. <laughs> Load. <laughs> yeah. The Kentucky Waterfall? Is that really a, a thing? Yeah. Is it? That is a mullet. No way. No that way. That's a good a Kentucky waterfall. That's the name of a mullet, that's a Kentucky <laughs> waterfall. <laughs> well, 10 points. <laughs> I that did, is really I good. I did not know I this. I like that. <laughs> yeah, me wow. too. Oh, here it is. Look, guys. Oh, my God. He even left a front strand on that one. Oh, wow. Folks at home. Oh, did he shave some of the top, too? Yeah. Dude. Oh, no. Zona went all the way. Why? Oh, was it a bet against who? I have no idea. I didn't see that far. Oh, we just oh, he put the lines oh. in it. Oh. <laughs> and they're not even straight. Oh, no, Zona's no. the worst barber ever. Look at the, the back view. Guys, was it Zona that shaved? Uh, make sure you guys check out Seth Fighter on uh, Instagram. Gerald Swindle's beard. No, who did that? Shaved. Remember, Mercer. I can't. Mercer. Was it Mercer that did it? Yeah, I think it was Mercer. Yeah, we're standing yeah, right well. there. Sw- Swindle. I know, but I couldn't remember beard, who it eh? was. Yeah. Then right after we went and talked to G Man. Yeah, we did. Over at the Huck booth. He gave us uh, yeah, his. Yeah, we did. He gave yeah. Amber yeah. the ticket. Amber's in love with the G Man. in the wet G-Man. spot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amber loves Gerald. So oh, let's talk about uh, since we're on the Elite Series, Mr. Ish Monroe, Daiwa yeah. Pro, won the event. Out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. I, I turned it on and Ish had won. And I was like, where'd you come from, Ish? 
Like it was a battle between uh, uh, Chad Kippins led day one. Day yes. two, Chad had the toughest day. And I watch a lot of Bass Live and I really enjoy it. And everybody should out, be out there. Should, I think it's the best way to learn about fishing because you get to like watch eight hours of a guy actually fishing. In my vlogs, I try to be as honest as I can, but I can't make you a nine hour vlog. Of how to grind this out. Bass Live. <laughs> <laughs> bass so you get to watch the speed fishing. That's right. <laughs> We're just going to speed this up to the highlights. And then we'll talk about what happened. Bass Live. So, uh, Chad, I watched the f- from 9 till uh, noon. Never caught a fish. Wow. At all. I know how that is. And he was in first place of his first Bass Elite event, and he had big fish at day one. I've never heard anybody be so positive while things were going so bad on well, the Well, that's water. a huge part of the game, man. It's unreal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't they go, would uh, check in on him, upset. and he was working a frog, and, and basically, I think... Uh, I bet you that's what Ish was doing, too. It, yes, for sure, Ish went on the frog. But yeah. the problem, I guess, with Chad's area, and they were talking about the announcing, is the water was coming up too fast, and the fish had moved. It was a t- It wasn't tidal. No, but the Mississippi River went up six feet over the last Holy week, and it had gone Jim. up six feet, six feet, six and it, feet, and it was going up two feet a day during the event. Like if wow. you watch some what? of the video of Randall Tharp flipping the uh, grass, he's moving at the six mile an hour. Like that, uh, like we were yeah, yeah. at St. Francis. Yeah, and they were flipping grass at six mile an hour. Who was it? Wow. Uh, who was laying? The, Dave Lafibra. So Dave Lefebvre was doing the same thing and he flipping a jig down the shoreline. And at one point, <laughs> he had to start his boat and go sixty feet because he, he said, "Is like I can't, I can't do the I can't do this on my troll motor. Like the the current's too strong. I'll never get anywhere." So he had That's to nice. drive back up to get to where he was fishing after the last fish. And they were, it didn't look like it was that fast. <coughs> and then I saw a Facebook video of Randall and like his boat and the other boat, and they were doing six mile an hour, and he was just flipping what he could. I think Randall That's finished That's like in the Santee was when wow. I walked, went in the Sandy the, the so, first day. So it was Chad is, crazy, is crazy trying crazy. to, um, you know, he's trying to get fish. And he, I'm, I'm telling you, I've never heard anybody stay so positive. So the break happens. Uh, I got a whole bunch of fishing stuff ready. Uh, in the vlog, you'll see when I load the truck in the boat. And I put on the way between Port Hope and the lake I fished, I put it on, uh, on the in the truck to listen to it. So Chad gets four fish in the afternoon. He goes rolling in to, uh, to weigh in, 400 yards from the weigh in. And he talks about how during pre-fish he saw this rock pile and that uh, I'm going to pull up to this rock pile and I'm going to get a big fish. He's like, I just know it. I, he's like, I worked real hard all day and I'm going to get this fish. I, I'm telling you, it sounded like on the on the uh, the audio vision that he made one cast he landed a four and a half pound largemouth made boy. 11th place for and he made his uh the th- third day cut well nice. you got to keep positive like we were oh, right yeah. there on sturgeon there last week right for sure and it was it was our positive thinking that kept us in the game because we had what two fish so in the, and we let's get into so congratulations to us and good on and uh mr pipkins i i met i sent him a big message and he got back to me today just saying you know how awesome that was and it's really good to see that in fishing to be positive we fished the csfl event on sturgeon lake yep we had a uh, we went pre-fished pre-fish went actually went really well we pull into this like uh channel what, like 60, 70 feet in, I yep. nail a donkey. And I'm like, Sean, I think they're here. Wow, you nail yeah. a donkey need... the day And there's still tournament. 250 yards of this channel, right? And we stop. And I'm like, <laughs> we're like okay, this is we're where we're going to start. We go to another channel because we thought if they're in this channel, then there'll be other channels. We've seen a whole bunch of guys come out of this other channel. So we go into this mini channel. Sean Whale's a three-pounder. We thought, lights up. So yeah, We got a pattern. We got a pattern. We know where they are. And in this channel in the past, when there was one in there, there was tons of yeah. them in there. Mm-hmm. Like, it was amazing. So we went and started looking for new stuff. Yeah. Thank God we went and checked. We went and checked a waypoint of mine that was in the first 10 waypoints I ever put on the unit. Now, and I had no idea what it was. Remember, we yeah. went and checked, and we went in there, and we saw some some small mouth, but they're going to play big in day two of the, on the tournament day. So tournament day it ended up being our limit fish spot. Yeah. Right. So day, which is huge to have, by the way, it is very like important. If you got a spot with, with, with smaller fish on it. You need a limit fish. If you're 1230 and you, you only got a fish or two, go to your limit fish spot, hammer them out, put your confidence back up and then go searching for kicker. So we, we blast off Sunday morning, 
see day two of the bass season and it, like, you know what it kind of like it's not the csfl's fault it's i'm glad we have tournaments right it kind of sucks that we're in ontario we don't have a practice season like it's just yeah, like yeah. oh if we go. could catch and release it'd be sweet we you could practice yeah, yeah. you could get better at fishing you could follow their movements that's not we'll do that on another show sean and i blast off we blast off what 200 yards yeah yeah. And then our, even, it's yeah. right there our channel i know go, you were we go in the channel sean drills a nice one 20 feet into the channel half the distance of what i caught mine yesterday i, know, I thought well, this is yeah. it man here we yeah. go by the time we get out of here, we are going to have the five fish we need. Yeah, we fished two hours, never get a hit. Oh, wow. I got one more fish. On yeah, the whoa, whoa, whoa! We probably fished two hours before we got that fish. So I, we threw a frog, maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, about an hour and a half. We were in there. So you so got we two go, fish in a well now. No, we got one. We go all the way through it, and well, we get on the way in. We got one, and then yeah. on the way back out, Sean got another one, which was like right across from where. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. And now we like we like. Uh, and what we, were you doing all this time, Ian? throwing a frog and then mm. we, we we were like well they're not gonna hit a frog today so we started flipping we flipped every inch of that thing yeah we were well like every inch like when sean if you watch the video of sean getting that second fish he let it soak forever so when you guys were out there and you weren't catching anything did you think to yourself what would mark do no, we no. knew what kind of <laughs> you were having. I got that second fish. I almost pulled myself out of the goddamn boat. Oh, I, yeah. I, well, I had my both my feet were against the side rail, right? Mm -hmm. And I set hook. And when I set hook, like the fish was a little bit heavy, and I almost pulled myself out forward out of the boat. I had to stop myself from falling out and set wow. back. Yeah, but I kept. I kept so some we hooked. On it. So we got two fish in the well. It's got to be probably <clears throat> nine o'clock by the time we left there. Yeah. Right. So still lots of day left. We go, oh, yeah, buddy, listen. All day. Yeah. So we go start flipping deep weed, never see a fish, right? Probably put two or three hours into that. Wow. So we run to this way, we, and we ran all over the lake. It's not like we flipped one deep weed patch. We flipped yeah, we were on the move. everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Like everywhere to the point where you, we'd flipped it enough to have been like, we should have rolled across a 12 incher. Next spot. Yeah, yeah. Next spot. Next spot. Next, we even met up with a guy who's trolling motor had died and he had the bim of d top up and he was in the tournament and they just quit really eh? yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you know you're right when you put up the bimini you had a bimini on his bass boat yeah it was like a fish like a deep yeah yeah, yeah yeah like a deep kind yeah, of yeah, deal. yeah yeah but, but they, his trolling motor we went, died he was having he was yeah. having shit days so he was like we had two in the well and when we talked to um another guy who we met on like a deep weed bed and they got five so we're like oh son of a bitch right so we 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 decide that we're going to go to waypoint 007 yep. and out of the 3,000 I have. And I managed to hook two 12, a 12 and a 13 inch smallmouth using a marabou jig. Wow. Like swimming it so slow. And then we were like, what are we going to do? So we ran to the river. And then Sean was able to put a good one on the boat almost right away. That boy, Sean. And then we called one of the fish. Sean caught another one and called one of the fish. But they was real lucky because like... Those are the only two fish we got, and we fished there all afternoon. Well, we didn't fish a lot. We we slowed right down yeah. though, too. Like we we ended up moving slow and kind of really picking the cover apart, right? Like hours so. of it. Hey, do you want to hear something crazy? Yeah, I never threw a senko once Good or man. a dinger once. No wonder you donutted. I know, eh? So we waited. You didn't throw your dinger? No, nope. no. Nope. Why? Why? Because, because. I didn't. I thought about throwing a Senko on that did tournament. Are you changing it up now? I think I did throw a Texas Rig Senko. I really? Didn't. I never, in pre-fish, I threw it a little bit, but never got anything on it. Like, I mean, a little bit. I mean, like, 15 minutes, and then that was it. We finished 34th, 43rd place. 44th, I think. 44th? I think so, 44th. But we were, like... How many boats? 112. 112. That's awesome. Every, everybody was tight, man. That's awesome. Like, well, whoever listen. caught the big <coughs> fish, if we would have had, so if we would have had that one that I missed the day before, we'd have been top four. Like, wow, it, I, that, it was like, close. yeah, Jason Greentree and Billy Williams, they pulled in 17 6. Congratulations right. to them. And <clears throat> like he said, if he didn't get that kicker, yeah, they he was back with everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, yeah. It seemed like whoever got so what their, was second? their, their what was kicker. second. Hey? It was right there too, uh, seventeen something. Yeah, yeah. Low there was 17. a couple close bags, and everybody else was. 13, Actually, 14. I think it was sixteen eight was second. I think I'm not sure. It was like but that. Uh, that ten it was to old school 14, sturgeon weight. Ten to fourteen pound was like 
ounces to the spot. And it was low weights. Like there was a couple tournaments uh, over that weekend too. Yep. A couple on rice, and it was low weights everywhere, man. Really? Eh? Oh yeah, low weights everywhere. I don't. I don't think a single twenty pound bag came in. No, I don't remember wow. seeing one right? of those. Or a nineteen pound bag. I don't think a well, nineteen pound bag came in. Well, it was it was tough. But it's that post spawn bite where whoever dropped a jig or whatever on top of the nose yeah. of a big female Got and had that reaction bite. We seen a giant the day before. In about two feet of water, that was like it looked so <laughs> confused, like it was just swimming, but like awkwardly swimming in circles and like no interest. When we were when I was throwing the marabou jig, I seen a giant smallmouth, a giant, no interest in hitting, just between me and uh, that little pontoon boat that was sitting there talking to us. It was really weird, and that's the problem with the post spawn bite is that you're if you're not the guy who, who jacks a four, you're done. You I need a four plus. And some potatoes to go with it. Hmm. And some potatoes. And some potatoes. <laughs> pot- I want to fish. We had potatoes. So bad. We had we oh, had I some potatoes. I can't wait to dock fish. They're not. Um, oh man. Yeah, I know. I know. I haven't yet this year to have that. You know, flip in and that. Boom. Did you fish docks. I don't think we did. No. Not really. Not really. Not really. We fish more like the channel, and then like there was docks going up the channel, but they're not yeah, stick out docks. They're yeah, all like no, yeah. parallel with shore docks. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Pull your boat up on your lawn. We fished that channel like every inch of it. Like we couldn't have fished any slower. Wow. Like that trolling motor was on 30 and we just like picked it apart. And I really thought there was probably, I thought there was 17 pounds of fish in there after we pre-fished it. I really did. And in in the past, when we got one like that, that close to the mouth, they were loaded up in the back. Hmm. Did you fish the mouth? Yeah. Well, the mouth isn't that good. No? No. It's kind of like they're in there. Nor is the river by the sounds of it. River was all right. Probably, if in hindsight, we probably should have fished the river like earlier. Ground that out. Yeah, I think there's big ones there. Yeah, I would imagine. I, I would bet that uh, some of the the top five fished in there. A lot It'd be of nice boats. to be able to spend a couple of days out there and pre-fish. And well, just that's go what you think of practice, stuff, eh? Right? I don't have the time to do that. <clears throat> really, no, me neither. You know? So here's and, an and interesting it was the day topic. after opener anyway, so nobody had the time to do that. Yeah. No. Right? So here's the big, uh, uh, our next CSFL event is on Rice Lake. Nice. Uh, I talked to uh, Andrew Mercer of Mercer Marine. Shout out to them. Hashtag yeah. Mercer Marine. Mercer Marine. You guys, if you need anything fixed, find uh, Mercer Andrew Marine Mercer. In, in the yellow pages? Yes. He, he'll hook <laughs> you up. But I was talking to Andrew. Andrew fished that uh, um, the Sunday event on Rice Lake. He said that out of the 70 whatever teams were out there, Almost all of them were on the smaller grounds down in the Hastings area. Almost oh, yeah. everybody. Wow. So he thinks, and he's a big smaller guy, and he he really knows that area well. He's been practicing largemouth. He's going to fish a CSF event. He's been practicing largemouth because he thinks that so many guys are doing this smallmouth thing that it's going to bugger everybody up. Mm-hmm. Right? That these guys like five years ago who were getting them, and it was kind of like a secret. Now there's going to be so many boats there that it's going to spread those big smallmouth out over yeah, the yeah. bags, and that you're going to need to catch like the largemouth is going to play a bigger role in the rice lake fishing because well, it, it really in the last five years it hasn't played a role at all. Yanking all those fish out of those pods too and getting relocated down the lake and beautifully like yeah. they got to make their way back up somehow, right? Do they make their way back up? I believe <coughs> smallmouth do. Large. No, but yeah. see, I always thought the smallmouth. You don't think they find a new 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 home? You want me to tell you a crazy Large story? Will, I think. No, they won't. Listen, so I. Three years ago, uh, in Brighton Bay, I hooked this giant largemouth, right? And we got it in the boat, and it had a, a tag in its back. Yeah. So we call the tag in to Queen's University. They tell us two years prior, the fish weighed like 519. It was weighed in at the Quinney Bass Champs and released, but it was caught from Brighton Bay. It swam all the way back down the Murray Canal and was caught on virtually the same place. Well. Wow. That's well, got to be. That's got to be forty miles. Got to go home and see the wife and kids. Yeah. But if you go to like, let's talk when they were in uh, the Bay of Quinney, up in those in that Trent River where all those uh, smallmouth sacks have been weighed in over the years from Lake Ontario fish. Mm-hmm. There's giant smallmouth in that river that oh, were sure never there is. before. Just so I don't know. I don't. I always thought the same too that smallmouth would be the ones that would go back. Yeah. But. You know, I I learned a lot that well, day. That's, that's what the consensus was years ago. I don't know if science. I don't know what it is now. I love whacking smallmouth on a jerk bait, spinner bait, and top water. I top hate waters. drop shotting. I don't like drop shotting. Yeah, it's like kind of boring, like isn't it? Oh, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, it does oh, get like a little boring. Water. 
right? Unless it's video game fishing, and you can, you got a real yeah, yeah, good yeah. bead on them, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's lots, but I I hate I hate standing there. How about dragging a tube? Oh, I don't mind yeah. dragging a tube. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I I feel okay. so. Here's the deal: dragging a tube during pre-fish just about kills me, right? Because you you're not really trying to catch them. But if I know on tournament day that this is how we need what we need to do in order to get fish, and I've caught a couple big ones doing this, it doesn't bother me. It really starts to bother me about nine o'clock when you don't have anything in the live well. Yep, that's when it really starts like falling. What are you gonna do? Yeah, that's when it really starts to bug me. Run to the river. Before we move on here, we should probably announce the winner of our pure fishing live well contest. Oh, there's a winner. There's there a is winner. a winner. Did I win? You uh, won. Sadly. I won. Sadly. You won. Yes. The winner, Eric Thornton. That a boy, Eric. Sixty-five likes on wow. his photo. Wow. What, is, what does he win? He wins the Fear Fishing Prize Pack that is upstairs, all ready to go. He's got a Fear Fishing T-shirt, a whole bunch of lures. Nice. He'll. Uh, well, congratulations, Eric, Eric. You message me, and I will get that to you. So, congratulations. We will run another uh, contest in the live well very soon. The live well has been really great. We get to see a lot of what everybody else is yeah, doing, really rather like than well. yeah, yeah, it's neat. rather than just what <laughs> yeah. we're doing. I've been away, so I haven't really done any content to it, but uh, it's really cool to see what other people sure. are doing, like the people who watch. I'll put this. my alligator video on it. Oh, we did see that. Yeah, how was that experience? That was crazy. It was crazy, eh? I was using a horny toad. I flipped in, and I must have landed it right beside him because before I could even blink, it was he was on it. Did you eat it? He ate it. I had Did alligator. You eat the in alligator? Texas. It was no, good. I cut it off because I didn't know what the hell to do. You guys want to cut your line? Yeah. You I left. Think, you left the alligator. With I think the, he cut your horny toad in his mouth. Yeah. No way is an alligator taking my bait. Let's do this, Mark Hunter. <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, let me tell you something. We have an R. My mama didn't raise no pussy, Mark. <laughs> check the li- You know what? Check the live well, guys. I'll throw that video out there uh, later on. Sounds good. RLM Elite Box. We're doing a multi-species box tonight. It's a multi-species Since box. Since you. Did so much awesome, Mark. We're gonna allow you to open it. This is the biggest box on the market, eh? It is. It is. See, and it comes with a handle. It has also got the most hard baits in it. Did you know that? Yes. Hard baits. I really like throwing hard baits. All right, so me too. I have, I have um, no idea what is in this box. Billy Wright's asking what the live well is. The Fear Fishing Live Well is a Facebook group we created for uh, that people could, you know, share their videos, their photos, the YouTube links, whatever they wanted, and then it would be a spot for us to be able to see what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All That's right, what so it is. Find it on uh, uh, Facebook. <coughs> okay, Mark, this is our multi-species box. Okay, that already looks, looks like good. we got some V&M Super Scented Swim Baits. That's a pretty cool color. You know what? I'm digging that. That's right up uh, Smallmouth Town. Woo-hoo-hoo. Pork yeah, fat. Look at that hair jig, buddy. Are they scented? Look at that hair jig. Freedom heads. I like Freedom those. heads. You know what the cool stuff about the Freedom Check tackle that out. is? is you That's can, a good color. Smallmouth. We'll eat that. Is you can put your own hooks on this. If you have a certain style hook that you want, they'll twist off this head here. And no you, way. You know, all the Freedom stuff are interchangeable hooks. That's a big hair jig. Yeah. yeah that's like that smoke. Oh, like that. this sounds great. This is right, maybe right that's up. That's pretty uh, cool. Right up Billy Wright's alley. So you can pop that off there? We got Nasty Hooker, the juice. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yes, for you, Billy. Let's see nasty that. Hookers. I'm a big swim jig. <laughs> the juice. I love Nasty yeah. Hookers. As long as they're not too expensive. Oh, oh. <laughs> and here's another one for you. It's the Flirty Frog. Oh. That's a good. Oh, yeah. This the Flirty Frog. I have one of these water. in the boat. Yeah, I keep meaning to throw something on this and give it a try. I know for sure Pike will eat that. That's a pretty sweet swim bait. It is. And then we got some Mickmaws here by Fanatic Baits. Open those up. Let's take a look at those. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, yeah. you keep going. Let's Tell us what else is in there. Yeah. Oh, we got a little jerk bait here by uh, Lunker Hunt. It's oh, it's like a it's like a it's like a bug bait. I'll check that out. You know what? We could probably catch crappie on those. I was just thinking, you crappie probably catch smallmouth on those. Perch, drop shot. Sure. Yeah. And we got a spin. Uh, we got a spoon here. Uh, the Windigo by Magic. No way. Windigo That's fishing. Cool. That's a great little ice fishing lure right there. Let me tell the you. The Bay of Quinney fish would yeah. eat that up right there. And we got some number two yeah, uh, micro jig hooks. Oh, I like these hooks. Yeah, I had too. a pack I used the other day as uh, spinnerbait trailers. And it looks like a sticks and stones buff. Hook it up, man. You can never have enough buffs. Yeah. You know what, <laughs> you know what I found out? On What's the up, week? buddy? I and, and everybody was at home, if you want to get your own subscription to RLM, simplefishing.ca, use the discount code FEARFISHING, and it'll save you five bu- uh, 10 bucks. 10 bucks on your first box. On your first, uh, your first box. Check it out. It's really cool. I found Great another, f- another function that. for the buff. No way. 
holding my hat on when I was flying down the lake. No way. All the buff is what saved me oh, last week. Oh, man, I bud. tell you. You guys want to hear something crazy? Buff. You guys want to hear something Get crazy? Get yourself a buff and you'll never this lose a hat again. Great segue into uh, our next topic. I finished my first club event ever on the weekend. Yes, you did. I had Scott Chesser with me. He had his hat on in the boat. And we were blasting down the lake. Yep. His hat comes off, and he looks at me. He goes, "Just keep going." Yeah, there's no turning around at right? blast off, man. You're gone. not a blast off. No, there isn't. Right? Nope. <laughs> but listen to this. Yeah. You guys have fished in my boat enough. We yeah. get to the first spot. We stop the boat. Guess where the hat is? In the splash. In well. the splash well. Nope. On the easy cam post. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no See? way, eh? Multifunction. It caught. There like, goes all your footage. It caught like you know, like the back part. <laughs> yeah. Right around the over the GoPro and hooked on and went down the easy cam post. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you got the footage. That's the cool. one in a billion yeah, shot. Did you get the footage of the of the hat landing on the post. No, it just comes off. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember and release it to Facebook before I. You know what uh, I'm really happy about? What's that? This nasty hookers. They're Canadian companies. Are they? Yes. Yeah. Open that jig up. We got nasty, up. nasty hookers are close Open that to jig up. I really yeah. like, that's kind of like a sexy I shot want, I was going right? to put it in my pocket. And <laughs> <some, laughs> going to use it up. <laughs> yeah, the, so it. I fished my first club event. I had uh, Scott Chesser. Scott Walton lost a wheel bearing on the way. So Pete oh, no. Garnier and I each got three guys. I okay. had um, uh, Brady, Scott Walton's nephew with me. He was, he, uh, he was a good... He's 15 years old. Yeah, yeah. First, right. and, and so the interesting thing it was Scott, me, Scott Chessers, myself, and Brady's first tournament, club tournament ever. All of you. All of you. Oh, wow. We had a blast of a day. We caught quite a few fish. Brady caught quite a few bass. Uh, Scott was telling me the uh, week before he had a hard time setting a hook on largemouth and the cane. Yeah. I would tell you that he laid the smack down on them this weekend. He landed at least one of our fish in our, our bag. Scott nice. Chesser well knocked done, the son. snot out of them. He got he like he was he uh he probably got through two or three, and uh, I got the other ones. We caught a ton of fish, but the same by thing by math by my math would be the other one. Yeah, I think it won't <laughs> one of my made it. I know that Scotty, Mister Chesser, called at least one of my fish, and then right at the end, I tried to call one of his, and it didn't work. But he did it. He smashed them. He did right a great on. job. It was kind of uh, it was busy in my boat with three and this guys. Was on Quinny? No, it was on Brighton Bay. Brighton Bay. We did a lot of jumping around, but we had a we had a blast of a time. Sweet, caught a ton of fish, and uh, so that was my first club experience. What do you think? Oh, that was awesome. They are a great group of guys, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, Gord Rodcliffe. I hope I didn't. Gord Rodcliffe. Rodcliffe. Yeah. Rodcliffe. Sorry, guys. He won. Was that when he had Lynn Scott Walton's father-in-law with him? Oh, really? They had yeah. sixteen and change. We had like thirteen nine. Oh, yeah, it was close. Right, it was real Kick close. Her away. Kick her away. Uh, they got theirs. Um, Mark Cavanaugh's brother Darren. Darren, yeah. He finished second. So Sweet. It, it was a really different since I'd never been in the club and I've never like. Uh, it was a great like when everybody weighed their fish in and then everybody sat around and talked. Yeah, and yeah. You, you know what I mean? It, it's not. It's a great way. I really wish when I was, like I said in the vlog, when I was 20 years old, I wish I would have went the club route. Yeah. And for it, all you guys that don't know, there's all kinds of bass club. I guarantee there's one close to your home that you probably don't even know about it. And you know what? Join it because it is a blast. And, and you know what? If you're a guy like me who's been tournament fishing for years and years and years and uh, has a boat, sign up for a club and you can help young people. Exactly. Or somebody who's just getting into it. Well, that's it. the whole concept, right? Grassroots, you know, getting people into tournament and it's fishing. So the yeah. funny thing is is that Monday I fished. Uh, like I, I didn't really pre-fish. I went there to check it out. You right? pre-fish for your clubby. So I Did was. You hear that? Out. I never <laughs> it saw. Happens. It's Chris Tatakanosko over here. <laughs> so I never <laughs> Polish, Polish pro Chris Tatasco. Yeah, the Polish pro. So Prince. I think if the the two the two of them learned anything <laughs> during the tournament was that uh, we had a really tough morning. But while I was there on Monday, I never saw any fish till twelve fifteen. So I kept telling them, just relax. We just got to kill the morning. They're going to show up right around 12, 15. I said, don't worry. It's going to happen. I was like, this is all a time and spot here. I fished here for years and years and years. Wait. So, you know, we kind of, we got, I think we got two in the morning, right? 12, 15 hits, right? I'm like, let's go. Go over there and we start catching fish. And I was like, you know, sometimes when you're fishing tournaments, you can't panic. You just have to have a deep breath. I said, we did all right for the morning. Scott got one on a, a chatterbait. Yep. Out in the middle of nowhere, too, like he was just casting. I got one on a spinner bait, and then we, we basically waited till 12.15, and then we put, like, everybody caught fish after that. If I'm throwing a spinner bait, you know I'm hurting. 
I caught a spinner. I oh, listen, spinner. I probably I love spinner. Spinner. I, hate I caught it. a. I hate it. Uh, and the, here's another experience. I caught that um, largemouth on the middle of a giant rock flat. That first, it's the only place I've ever been in the whole world where largemouth hang out on a rock flat, wow. and they just sit there and school. And that's where I got my spinner bait fish. Really? Yeah, it's nuts. Um, you can't be when, afraid. When you throw a spinner bait, are you just like cast I'm in panic retrieve, mode. or are you kind of jerk bait? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I, sometimes there's I, more than one way to throw a spinner bait. I, right? I, like I burn it, yeah. right, and then I'll, I'll give it. If I'm going to fish it around something, like let's say I was going to, I threw it a, a couple times at docks or a yeah. rock. When I get it to the rock, I'll give it a little for it. You know, pauses for a second, gives a little pulse. But I don't throw I don't throw a spinner bait a lot. Probably I, I like to throw a spinner bait in end of September October yeah. when those fish are really putting on the feed bed. Then for smallmouth. Search this bait time of year? only, search bait only, or all day long. Uh, if they're biting, I'll cast it all day long. I like fishing. Yeah. I like hitting them on it. Often, like Lake Ontario, I could go to Lake Ontario with a white spinner bait and cast that all day. Amazing, there a fish will come up uh, twenty feet to hammer down a burning spinner bait. But it's again, it comes down to confidence in your lures, right? There's all kinds of guys who fish a spinner bait and only fish a spinner bait and catch all kinds of fish on. I just, I my bait like that is a a black flipping jig. Yeah, like I really feel comfortable throwing a black flipping jig, and I'm pretty sure that everybody, like I'm going to catch fish on it. So that's what I like to throw. You like throwing a spinner bait? Yeah, I don't mind throwing a spinner bait. I think uh, yeah, I've I've spent a lot of time throwing a spinner bait in the last couple of years, being partners with Chris Tosca, and uh, we've done pretty good with the spinner bait, man. Yeah, especially on cooch. Any fish that is on feeding on bait, we need a spinner bait. You may some just sometimes when they get on like a crawfish bite, not so hot on the spinner bait. That yeah, then tube. you're right, or just uh, don't like it. Or yeah. like a fr- like Football frogfish, you get somebody fish that are really on like a frog bite, and there's lots of frogs around. What you got there, Sean? Hmm? That's a there? cool looking jig. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, this is going right in my pocket, man. That's a good looking <laughs> jig. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's all yours. It's a pretty cool, cool swim jig. It's got this. Pretty Can cool. you see that, folks at home? Yeah. Can you see that? And that that is by who? The Happy Hookers. <laughs> Nasty, hookers. Nasty hookers. You know what? I bet you that would work awesome and with one of those the swim juice. jigs. Yeah. One of those swim jigs yeah. are. Uh, um, I can't swim. even think. One of those a. Uh, what it came in that pat box? Where's yeah, our box? Jig. Swim jig. Like one of the yeah. It'd work awesome with that. It's swim a, bait. It's swim a, bait. It says, "Don't be nice." Be nasty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I really awesome. like that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to. I've never had a problem actually. catching fish <laughs> on that. He's taking that home, you know. Sexy right, shack. Put it back in the he bag so I don't He's get anything nasty on it. <sighs> Is there anything we missed? Uh, oh, our friends from Pennsylvania came. Yes, Jay Troyer and Ralph. Yeah, they, they came. brought the champagne of beers. For they you. did bring me a, a case of Miller High Life, one of those thirty-five packs of cans. Oh, oh you, no. you, you know what about that case of beer? They left it at the side of the truck. Really? And we talked to them during weigh-in, right? Yeah, they came to our weigh-in at Sturgeon. Yeah, that's yeah, how we saw them. Really cool. And uh, they left that case of beer, like a 30-pack, right beside the truck. And all of those anglers Thank you for not drove the right beer. by that truck. And like we, we had, like the, the truck was right out at the road, right? Yeah. Drove yeah. right by the truck. Case of beer sitting there playing his day, and they were all like, oh, that's somebody else's beer. No, on one that. guy. Yeah, really. Took yeah. That case that's of beer. Awesome. Yep, yep. Nobody. It was. They was sitting there. Oh, there's a lot of places you go that'd be gone. And yeah. the truck and the downtown truck be gone. Peterborough. My <laughs> <Right>. driveway. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> truck being gone, uh, this guy Derek Blake, he fishes the uh, FLW tour. Yeah, yeah. He, I saw he that went too. down there to uh, start his pre-fish, and near the Detroit. night before, yeah, yeah, down for Lake Lake Saint Clair, and 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 uh, right before the night, like the night before he started his pre-fish. His truck and his boat gone. No oh way. Yeah. God. You know what he was most upset about? Losing his tackle. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, what he said. Yeah. He says, the thing that hurt me most is all, knowing all my tackles gone. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. He had like an old school pop iron that he was, that was like his thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gone. When I had all my stuff stolen out of my basketball when they broke into yeah. it, the thing I was most upset was uh, I had a box of like stuff you couldn't buy anymore. Right, and yeah. I and I even tried to plead with people that you can have all the rest of it. I just really want that box back, and there was like old old stuff, like you know that time tested and true stuff oh, that yeah. you just never see again. That's what I was most upset the about. The Red Devil. You know, I had a, I had a whole the banjo bunch, minnow. Two two like <laughs> giant <laughs> two giant boxes of like original uh, slammers, like yeah, yeah. like Kulik board, yeah, like hand, yeah, hand and board, I really yeah. really really wanted I those. I still have some of those. I really wanted those two boxes of those gone. Mm. I, that's what I can feel his pain. I really wanted those. 
and a whole bunch of crankbaits. I wish they still made the and darter. Stuff. I think it's called the darter. You know, they're really long. Ones. Yeah, I got some of those. You like those? I, love I can hook them. you up. I love them. I, I haven't used them in a couple steal years. Them before you give them to him. I have a whole bunch you got in your uh, jig, upstairs. You nasty hooker. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the next day, so Joy, they were at uh, they came to watch weigh in, and Sean and I got to go. We had a tournament where yep. I fished with Jay and Sean fished with Ralph. Tough day on Rice Lake. Sean uh, spent the whole day calling my phone to tell me how many fish they were catching. Even drove down the lake, <laughs> right? So the night before, Ralph had caught like a, a five eight or five nine smallmouth on a spinner bait. Mm-hmm. So we're di- we're fishing a point, and I I see all kinds of big smallies. I couldn't get one to bite. And Sean calls and he says, "Where are you?" And I was like, "Oh, we're down here at such a point." I see. He said, uh, "Okay, stay there. I got to get my spinner bait box from you." And then I hang up the phone, and Jay goes, "You do know they caught that big fish last night on the spinner bait?" And I was like, "What?" He was like, they must be pounding on the shunts coming to get more spinner baits. And I was like, no. So we pulled <laughs> up, right? And this is... And this is <laughs> 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 so I'm a little nervous at this point, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So would they pull up, right? <clears throat> and Sean only does the talking and Ralph is quiet, right? So and then I, you knew. So as soon as he pulled <laughs> yeah, away, he figured it out. Yeah. as soon as he pulled away, I was like, Jay, they got nothing. And, and Jay's <laughs> like, what do you mean? I was like, I've been here before where Sean says... Let me talk. I'll get them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, we got three fish here. We're going to be fine. Yeah. Well, Ralph, he's a good god well, man, right? Yeah. He, I don't think he said shit if he got a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jay Super and Ralph, nice I'm guys. sorry I missed you guys. But I, we I had a great time. But the worst thing happened to Ralph's boat the next day. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, my uh, God. When he pulled into the dock at night, he pulled in nose first. Instead of spinning the boat around, oh, letting, no. and the waves came over the back, yeah, oh, and no. sunk the boat. Yeah. Oh, no. thank God it was super shallow there, man, and the motor yeah, didn't yeah, go yeah, right yeah. down. Oh no! But I didn't see. Did they get back out on the water? They got back that? out of the water. I believe. Yeah, the, the boat was okay. It was right? all right. They just drained and, uh, all the gas, gas tanks and everything. Yeah, yeah, they, they were they were at um, Harris. Harris, yeah, okay. and they went through the boat for them. Yeah, they sure sent us. Okay. They yeah. sent us a picture right away. I was like, "Is there anything yeah, yeah, we, there? I'll come up there right now." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they like, had no, got the boat out of there by then. They were just waiting for the. Sean was going to go in there and just pull it out with one hand, lift it up. Yeah, yeah, beast mode. Yeah, beast mode. Final thoughts. Uh, final um, thoughts. We oh. didn't talk about Miles's party. Oh, oh. happy oh. birthday, Sean's brother oh, Miles yeah. had a yeah, yeah. birthday party. Yeah, we had 40. A surprise. Yeah, surprise party for my brother on Saturday night was pretty good. I miss that yeah, too. Do you guys ever feel like we're getting old? Like when people are having 40th birthday parties? No. No? No, because no. I had mine like old. six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I Almost seven. Next year. I want a big yeah. party for next year. Yeah, no, it was good. Away. Some people yeah. are still nursing a hangover yeah. from Saturday yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. I Mr. West? Yeah, I had a hard one. Wow. Slept all day Sunday. I felt great yeah. Sunday. It was good to get it out of me. Slept oh, we crushed them Saturday night. You know, I have this vivid memory of my dad turning 36. And I remember I was in grade two. And I thought he was the oldest person I'd ever met in my life. But for some reason, uh, my buddy was staying over. We were having like sleepover. And my dad was turning 36. I don't remember any of his other birthdays, but I remember 36. And I turned 36 this year. So uh, that's been a... A bit of a rough spot for me. I thought he was. Six. I'm ten I thought years old. He was you know, the you oldest person on the earth. At I'm 36, I thought he was. Man, I thought that guy was like heading for the I retirement could be your home. Dad. Wow. No, he couldn't. No, I couldn't. Close, but no. No. Not unless you were like real frisky at ten. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty frisky at ten. <laughs> 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 you probably had hair on your wiener when you were. We had. I was, <laughs> I was working on it. <laughs> I had a patch. Uh, I had a patch. <laughs> <laughs> What's coming up? What are you guys most excited about over the next couple of weeks? What do you guys uh, got going? Long weekends coming up. Canada Day is coming. Canada Day. Happy Canada I'm Day, be everyone. At the trailer there. I think. Uh, happy Fourth of July. Yeah. Happy Fourth of July. They're get just getting pumped for that. Everything's all the stuff was starting to come out. Oh yeah. In the states there at the Walmart and all they that. They really yeah. go hard compared to us. Eh? Oh yeah. They, yeah, they don't mess around. We got a yeah, rubber duck. We got. <laughs> we get a rubber duck. Stupidest thing ever. Should have had a rubber hey, a rubber bass. Thank Justin Trudeau for that one. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. You guys got any tournaments this weekend? Tax dollars um, there. there's one on pigeon I can do with somebody that is new. Nice. Can't I'm pretty. Be, I'm pretty yeah. new. No. Like I'm not can't a base club member. I'm, huh? Not a not a club member. I'm not, not a, club a member person right that now. does tournaments. Just it's to introduce people. Oh, to nice tournaments. It's on Pigeon Sunday. Nice. So that's cool. I, I was like going to take Hannah, events. but then she's bringing her boyfriend to the trailer and gotcha. blah, blah, gotcha. blah, 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 blah. So I'm, yeah. uh, I'm going to get geared up to put a ton of time into pre-fishing Rice Lake. 
Yeah? I'm going to put a ton of time into it this year. Why you know, you? In, in my whole fishing career, uh, I've never won Rice Lake, and it's the one I couldn't care if I ever won a tournament again. But I really like to win Rice Lake once. Well, it is your home lake. I got I got a second and a third. Really? On like big events hmm. and just can't win it. I remember the You better I, get yourself another partner. <laughs> we're gonna win our buddy. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a ton of time into not even pre fishing. I'm gonna I we never even talked about, it, but I got the, the pan optics unit yes, on did. the boat. I haven't got it figured out. I I can roll up to a spot right now is uh like a rock play and, and decide if there's fish there or not. Two seconds. It's really, really easy to read that way. I haven't mastered like watching the screen. Excuse me, and video gaming it. Yeah, yeah it's I, I'm, tough to get into. You really got, like, there's, uh, it is, it is really hard to, because I want to look at what's going on in front of the boat, not what's going on on the screen. So I, I'm really got to practice that. But my plan is to get my uh, underwater camera out and just not even a ton of time fishing, but a ton of time sitting on the deck of the boat with uh, the underwater camera and marking spots. And then really using the pan optics to, de- to know that they're there or if the, they're not there. What are those cones called? You put over the side of the boat and you look down them. Uh, I flogger. Just flogger, that's right. Flogger. Yeah. Flogger. So we, Maybe we should invest in a flogger. We used one a long time ago, Marley and I, to... Uh, Did you make it yourself? No. I don't remember. Ra- Marley got it from somewhere. And it came in like three sections so you could like put it in your rod locker. Yeah. Uh, we used it for... Um, you know when you're like... So if you go to Lake Ontario and you're fishing uh, deep spawning fish... The four pounders all spawn where you can see them. The giant, giant spawn in like fifteen feet where you like you drive the boat over yeah, and you yeah. can just see them. That's where the monsters are. So we actually used one one time for we could judge those fish. And the one we had had like a, a measuring thing so that you could measure to know how like around how big it was. Really? Okay. Right? So if it was twenty feet down, you know you'd had to you had to pluck a couple, right? <coughs> So you pluck one, you get a five pounder, let's say, and you weigh him, and then you know on the scale that he was four and a half or five inches, twenty feet down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know roughly how big that fish was. Yeah. Well. So you didn't pluck him off until tournament day. Yeah. And then yeah. Fancy periscope. It's pretty cool. You can you can really see Underwater them pretty good. Yeah. I don't know if you could you would work on rice like though. Mur- rice is pretty murky. Yeah. I don't know if you could see down. You could use it on sturgeon, I think. Simcoe for sure. It's a pretty cool invention. Everybody check them out. You, you'll, uh, yeah. Google I know a few guys. Called Google. a vlogger. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. It works really and well. Basically what it is. You, you can like look a, at uh, like lots of guys like Scott Martin. There's a couple yeah. of videos of him with like setting hook with it in his hand. Really? I think that would be hard to do. Oh. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be hard to do? Yeah. We would just take turns. One guy holds it and the other yeah. guy fishes it. So check out uh, YouTube. Check out Flogger. Bass flogger. Don't yeah. look just a flogger. Yeah, don't go flogger for <laughs> God's sake. Make sakes. sure you put the word fishing or bass You'll in there. Never go to heaven. <laughs> Sorry, parents. <laughs> <laughs> final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts. I just wanted to thank everybody for the support while I was down south. Um, we had really a lot. I got a, a ton of messages. and We were and really excited. Yeah. When you had your couple of days of good pre fishing, we were all really excited. I was excited really for excited, you. and then I was like, boom, boom, boom. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were. I gonna thought do I was it. gonna crush him, dude. I really did. But with the tidal water, everything changes an hour a day. So uh, right? yeah, before so. we wrap this up, let's say, how do you find? So if we're tidal fishermen, right, and we know none of us know anything, how do you pre-fish tidal water? Like, do you have to go a week before? Well, it's pretty obvious. I don't know. Well, we're like, well, how would you do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if it's you pretty had, obvious. <laughs> yeah. If you had to do it again, would it? Would you focus more on the tidal part of this? Oh, you have to. Everything's tidal there. Everything's current. So how would you find fish in the morning? Like, you have to go downstream from where you were, depending on the... The morning could be high tide one day, and then five days later, it's... So halfway how do you, down you, or it's moving. So you really need to be on. It's it's crazy. Gotcha. I never. It, it, it's hard to pattern something when everything is changing. Yeah. Every day. I think that yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Like I found some stuff, and then if 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 I if I had if I had a another day or, yeah. or, or a couple more days of practice beforehand, I think I would yeah. be able to put the puzzle together a little bit better. Uh, but you know that's, that's fishing, you know, and yeah, I, I definitely sure. learned. Sometimes you learn more on the days you don't catch fish than you do on the days I, you I honestly believe that. Yeah. The day, I always say that on the blog, the day yeah. that you whale them and they just seem to, you didn't learn nothing. Yeah. Right? The day that you really struggled, like uh, like our tournament on sturgeon, I think that uh, 
other than winning, just like pulling through when you thought it was going to be really, really tough. You learn a lot about not quitting. You learn to be more like Chad Pittman, right? You can't quit. You got to keep down. We're going to get this. And Sean yep. was really positive. And you know, after we hooked those two, we didn't even have a limit when we left the smallmouth spot. We only had four fish. And yep. I was like, how confident do you think we can get one up the river? And he was like, I'm, I'm, I'm positive we'll get one. And I was like, well, s- screw these smallmouths. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. And we got it done. So I, you definitely will learn more. We enjoyed ourselves. Yeah, we had a great time. That's good. Great day. That's good. That, that's yeah. a huge part. Of it. Then I had some peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah. Did you? Oh. Yeah. Did he wipe it on you? No. I threw a peanut at him. He did. Did you? <laughs> You're <laughs> a dick. Peanut at me. Ian's allergic to peanuts. I am. And uh, good old Sean's <laughs> eating sandwiches on the he boat. He doesn't care. And then we were actually <laughs> talking about how if I went into epileptic shock, I was like, what are you going to tell the cops? That I, you were giving me CPR and I just kept swelling up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just remember how easy it is to kill you, okay? <laughs> yeah, with a peanut. Uh, final thought? Uh, I just want to thank everybody for uh, watching us on CSFL yeah. Live and making all the comments. That was pretty cool. It's pretty cool that people can watch the live and weigh in. Yep. And we had a lot of people show up to see us weigh yep. in yep. and talk to us, like a, yeah, yeah. quite a few people. Yeah, yeah. I was wow. really shocked. Talked to a lot of guys that day. Sweet. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Amber, you got a final thought? I like this fishing community. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. No, I don't. My final uh, thought is be more like Chad Pippins. Honest to God, I'm really impressed. And I, I, I didn't. And I, like I said in the vlog, um, I didn't know anything about Chad other than he's in a hell of a smallmouth fisherman. He's uh, got the best heron vision. Fighter was close, but fighter shaved it off. But <laughs> Pippins have got the <laughs> best heron vision. He, I actually learned on the weekend that he qualified. Uh, for the Elite Series, he's mm-hmm. been bumped out of the Elite Series twice and qualified two more times. So he's actually qualified to fish the Bassmaster Elite Series three times. I did uh, text Brandon Polinick because him and Chad, um, uh, la 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 la, travel together. Yeah. And for somehow I have Brandon Polinick's cell phone number, so I texted Brandon and I was like, "Could you just pass this along to Chad?" And uh, Brandon told me he's the most positive person he's ever met in his life. And for Brandon to say that, who's probably one of the most positive people, that's pretty huge. So be more like Chad Pippins. Don't give up. Keep his, you know, that that I can do it face on. The best thing you'll ever learn in life is self-motivation, right? To just keep going because, you know, it comes from deep down inside. It could always be worse, folks. Yes, sir. Okay, bros. Thanks for watching. All right. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night.